So a big part of setting up a biomechanics lab is pointing your cameras. Now, in the past, it was a huge deal where placing your cameras and pointing them took several days and a lot of trial and error. But with modern systems, that's not as difficult. As you can see, we were able to set up this eight camera motion capture system very quickly right here in our recording studio. So don't let it intimidate you. It's a lot easier nowadays than it used to be. Additionally, it's so easy that systems don't have to be as permanent as they used to be. Now, one way that I have found to help out considerably in setting up is placing the markers on the ground, as you see we've done here. And placing these markers is allowing us to have a reference point. Now, the cameras haven't been pointed yet. We're not skipping that step. All we did is put them up on tripods in a general area that we want to have them at. Now, we did consider a few factors, like for example, we want to be analyzing gait right here, and we want our subject to walk down our uh, walkway right here, so we place cameras up on both ends, and we have two uh, lower, so we can see front and back, and we have these two uh, side cameras that are going to give us somewhat of a sagittal view so that we can get a complete uh, biomechanical model out of uh, this data acquisition. Now, knowing all of that, now we have to go ahead and point our cameras. As you can see in the software, the cameras are pointed almost completely randomly, but you can see the markers on the floor, so you can get an idea of how that can be used to better point them. So we're going to go through and do that, point each camera so that it uh, can see the floor, but it's not important for it to see all of the markers necessarily. We also are going to want to uh, view the markers up high. So for this reason, we've rigged up another tripod so that we can place a marker approximately in the height of our subject so we can try to get a full body data acquisition. We're also going to place this marker at mid-height that will be just a little bit higher than the pelvis and this is going to allow us to make sure we get that lower body and if possible we're going to point our cameras to see the full body but our focus right now is lower body. So the first thing going to do is rearrange all of the cameras so we have an idea of which camera we're working on in an easier way. Going to make this one number one and it currently says number six. Okay, now they're all counted around and look at each camera individually. So as you can see, this camera isn't showing very much. Now, we're not going to go through all the detail of this every time, but at least for the first camera, I want to explain what I'm doing. And I want to point it further down so I get a good view of uh, this middle area, which is our primary area of interest. And as you can see, this marker is still in it. So we have a good lower body view. Now, the interesting thing about motion capture is that actually, it doesn't matter which direction the camera is facing. We typically think, oh, cameras need to be straight up and down. What I'm gonna do now is turn this so that we get a nice long view across the diagonal of the camera, see how much more we can see uh, of maybe even the upper body.
So you can see pointed like this. You can't quite see this marker up here, but you can see almost up to the shoulders. So that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and accept that. I'll quickly go through the rest of the cameras and point them at it. So we were able to point the cameras for a good lower body recording. However, as we suspected, we're going to have some problems getting a full body gait analysis. So we're going to focus just on lower body. So now that the cameras are pointed, you can see we still have some problems. With all the cameras on here, there are a lot of reflections. This isn't going to get us a very good data acquisition, especially because some cameras can see each other. Now, this is a feature that largely depends on the camera manufacturer that you might use, but what we're going to do is use camera groups. Now, I know that cameras one, two, I'm sorry, two, three, and four are on one side of the studio. So I'm going to put them in camera group one, whereas cameras one, five, cameras one, five, six, seven, and eight are on the other side of the studio, I'm going to put in camera group two. You see, that took care of most of our reflections. So, as it stands right now, you still have a few reflections, but we have a lot of stuff going on here, and quite frankly, here in our studio with all our lights, it's pretty much one of the most difficult ways you can set up a camera system as uh, we have other sources of light that we have introduced to be able to make these videos. But uh, we can apply marker masks as necessary in order to uh, get rid of the last few. So we're going to remove all these extra markers that we used as reference, then create the masks, and then we'll see what our studio looks like as a motion capture volume. So now we're viewing all of our cameras. We have a few more reflections in there after we removed all markers, anything that we could. And we're gonna use auto mask just to take care of those last few reflections. At this point, we're ready to calibrate and in the next unit, we'll show you how we calibrate this specific system. Now, obviously there are a lot of differences between everything that we've just done. Uh, if you have a different camera system, uh, it's probably done a bit differently, but it's going to be relatively similar. So, uh, the principles still apply. So, continue on to the next chapter as we talk about calibration.